Welcome back everyone. In this video we are going to be talking about control flow statements. So most of this junk we had from the last video we're just going to get rid of. But we are going to keep this much. So if you don't have this you might want to write it out but basically we're just getting input from the user to guess a password and then we're comparing to see if that password is correct. So by the end of this video you should have a pretty good understanding of if statements and branching in our program. But you know what else you need to understand? how to get a job in the industry. And the number one way to do this is to be good at interviewing. So if you need to really solidify your interviewing skills, check out our sponsor, Pramp. With Pramp, you'll get paired with another individual who is going to ask you interview questions. And then you have to solve those problems hands-on using a programming language of your choice. And then at the end, the person's going to rate you on how well you did and if you're able to solve the problem correctly. This is pretty awesome because it helps you get over the social anxiety of interviewing and it really helps you solidify your knowledge of whatever programming language you're trying to work with. The actual problems themselves, they vary. So for example, they have problems on data structures and algorithms, but even stuff like system design, front end, data science, and even behavioral interviews if that's what you're struggling with. If you're going to understand one thing in software development, make sure it's how to ace the interview. And Pramp's gonna help you get that done. So check them out, I'll leave a link for you in the description. By now you probably have a pretty good understanding how this output works. We basically pass an argument in here and it's going to print out to the console. And because this is evaluated to true or false, we've been getting these outputs false, true, and so forth. But usually we're not just going to want to print true or false, we're actually going to want to branch our program depending on what the value of some expression is. So by calling this method on this string, we either get true or false. Now the way we can branch in our application is using the if statement. So the structure for this is if, and then parentheses, and then curly braces. Now inside of these parentheses, you're going to have an expression. And we're gonna type out the expression here right now. It's just gonna give us an error. <laughs> inside of the curly braces, is our code to execute, if true. So if this expression evaluates to true, we're going to execute the code inside of here. So instead of printing this here, we could actually take that and we could put that in this if statement and it will evaluate to true or false. And then for the code to execute, well, we could just output something for now. Let's say your, your guess was correct. Awesome. So let's run this, guess the password let me in, which is stored right here in this password variable. And we get the value true. And because it's true, this if statement is executed and we get this output that says your guess was correct. If we try it again and we put in the wrong password, it's always so hard to come up with stuff. <laughs> I was trying to say Apple Crisp, but um, yeah, definitely didn't mean to put Crips there. You can see that this statement prints false and this expression here is evaluated to false, so we just jump right over the if statement. And the execution begins here, and obviously there's nothing left, so the program just ends. If we were to put something after the if statement, it's always going to run. So when we run this, let's say we say, it still executes that, and if we do put the correct password, it still executes that. So basically after the if statement, the code just continues on line by line. Now there is a way if you wanted to stop the execution of the program if this is true, you can do that using the return keyword. So you could just put return and then a semicolon, and now this is not always going to run. Because if this evaluates to true, it's going to print your guess was correct, and then the program's going to end. The return keyword is just a keyword to end whatever method you're currently in. So it's going to basically say, yo dog, we're done with this main method. We can be done executing code. So let's try running this thing. Let me in. It says your guess was correct and then it does not print this. That's one way to end the program. There is another way you could do this and that's with the else clause. So if you go down here and say else and then put more curly braces, this is going to evaluate if it's false. So I could take this code here, place that inside of the else statement, and we could say, this is false, for example. So now one or the other is going to execute, but never both. So if we get the password wrong, it says this is false. If we get it right, it says your guess was correct. So that's the else clause. There's one more thing you need to know about, and that's the else if. So for example, in this scenario, we're checking to see if the password is let me in. But what if we wanted to check if it was let me in 
or don't stop believing, which is the second password. <laughs> so you can only get into this secret application if you got one of those two passwords. So I could go down here and create another password, like password two, for example, but I'm actually gonna show you a different way you could do this without the variable. So in order to make an else if, we're just gonna move that else down here and we're gonna say else if another set of parentheses and another set of curly braces. So it's gonna look like this. And I tend to put the else on the same line as the closing. It's totally up to you what you wanna do. All right, so inside of here, we're going to put another expression that could be evaluated to true. So this first expression is seeing if our guess is equal to the password. Well, now we want to check against a different password. So let's say that different password is don't stop believing. And then you can just put the dot right on that string equals, and then we can put the variable guess, which is going to be stored from the scanner.next line. So that is another way you could use this equals. You can just put it directly on a string literal. So in this scenario, we can do a different output and say you got the second password, for example. All right, now let's run it. So if we say, let me in, it's going to execute the first one. Your guess was correct. If we say, don't stop believing, you got the second password. And then lastly, if we get the password wrong, it says this is false. One thing you might wanna do is compare with lowercase words. So if you wanted to do that, you can go in and append another method here and say dot to lowercase. And that's going to return a string, which we can then call the equals method on. So this is a concept known as method chaining. So basically we're taking this first method and that's going to execute and return a new string that's gonna be all lowercase. And then it's going to compare against guess, which we could also put to two lowercase. So it's a little bit more complicated, but if you really want to make sure people aren't messing up just with their casing, then you can go through this process. So dot two lower case dot equals, and then we're passing in guess to lowercase. Awesome, so that is all of our code. Now, if we go in here and we say, let me in. It says your guess was correct. This other one says false because it's not doing that too lower. So you can see how the comparisons are different. So I'm just gonna get rid of that so it doesn't confuse us. In Java and basically every other programming language, strings with different character casing are not the same thing. So let me in with these capital letters is fundamentally different then let me in with all lowercase letters, like right here. All right, so my dog's coming upstairs, so I'm gonna get going before she uh, <laughs> makes a bunch of noise. So thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and check out the links in the description for a link to the Java Crash Course, the blogs, as well as our generous sponsor. Thanks guys, and in the next video, we're gonna be talking about some more cool stuff. Ain't that right, Kava? So yeah, no? Oh, okay.